Get ready. Mike Tirico is about to pull you in with the biggest names in sports. Rodgers firing and it is Devontae Adams for the touchdown. I have to say that I've been a fan of the game for years. I mean, I grew up watching Super Bowl highlights on an old VHS tape when wearing that thing out. Mike's got you covered for the PGA Tour, the Triple Crown, Notre Dame football, and football night in America. You can't cover all of these things. It's the Mike Tirico Podcast. This marks the beginning of a new broadcast era. Mike oh, no. Tirico, Godspeed. We thank you for downloading the podcast. We are looking forward to what some think is the best weekend of the NFL season, divisional playoff weekend the four games start with the afc game we're all going to be in kansas city for the colts taking on the chiefs on nbc with a three o'clock eastern pregame before they kick at 4 30 so we're really going to set the table for the weekend and the game and then saturday night it's dallas and la it sounds really good it sounds old school you have a lot of dallas fans in the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the early game Sunday. It's uh, that Sunday tradition. It's New England at home off a of bye. We'll see if Brady and Rivers head-to-head becomes something that becomes a tight game in the third or fourth quarter because they just got a good feeling around this Chargers team. And the uh, nightcap will be New Orleans at home with Drew Brees in the Dome where he and Sean Payton are exponentially better than they are on the road. And the road to the NFC lane of the Super Bowl goes through Louisiana, the Saints against the Super Bowl champion Eagles, who just find a way not to die, and they keep going and going and going. So to break all this down, a guy who is very familiar with the Philly situation, but also can speak to these new coaches getting hired with eight new coaches this year and speak to being in the playoffs and also going up against Tom Brady and working with Andy Reid. The person who can put all that together is the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. Good to have Sean McDermott on the podcast this week. Well, Coach, I want to start with... Just the general feeling that a whole bunch of guys are going through because uh, we have all these about a quarter of the league switching over head coaches, some coordinators are being promoted. Uh, just you've gone through this over the last couple of years. How fast do those first four, five, six days go once you're officially named a head coach? <laughs> you know, I, re- I can recall um, flying back from. Uh, the meeting that I had with Terry and Kim Pagula, where I got the, where I had the uh, where the job was offered, and that from the time I took off on the airplane to the time I land landed, I had uh, somewhere is around 500 text messages. Um, it just and it, and it didn't stop. It just went you know went up from there, and it was just amazing how fast you know you, you wear the colors of one team for X amount of years and then how quickly it changes and all of a sudden you're on another team and and uh and now are you on the team but you're the head coach of the team the leader and and um, it's amazing and you were in Philly for 12 years and then Carolina for for five years for a guy who's been in the business 20 years you've you've had a a pretty stable life in terms of Philly for that long Carolina and then obviously the last couple of years in Buffalo. I've, I've got one for you, Sean. Once the uh, last few head coaches get hired, you're going to move into the upper half of tenure for head coaches in the NFL because, let's see, the guys who were in your class, two of them were the next day, right? Uh, Sean McVay and Anthony Lynn with the Rams and the Chargers. And then Kyle Shanahan, they had to wait till Atlanta, New England played the Super Bowl. So you were first in that class. So once they fill out all 32 jobs – you're going to be 15th of the 32 head coaches in terms of tenure with one team in the NFL. That's unbelievable. That's, that's mind boggling. It really is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's incredible. Um, it's part of what we do and it's, it's part of the results driven business. You know, I, we, we both uh, understand that. And, um, you know, it's, it seems like it gets younger and younger every year uh, in terms of the, the guys that they're hiring. Um, I just wish they would have hired younger when I was first when I was younger. <laughs> um, but but no, it's it's uh, it's it's an honor to have a job. Uh, there's only 32 of these in the world, and um, it's the best of the best. And the guys that are that are being hired, and the ones that are already um, sit in these seats, um, it's it's a it's a it's an honor. It's an esteemed class of of guys that have worked hard to get to where they are, and. Um, and there's many others out there that are working just as hard that, that that'll get the chance next next season. And and so um, you know I'm just I'm just honored to be a part of it and and understand how how um, you know fortunate I am 
and and you're 44, so you are plenty young with an opportunity to continue to grow. Let, let's talk about your season a little bit before we talk about some of these playoff games and the teams that are involved. Nine and seven, make the wild card game, lose to Jacksonville in your first year. Six and ten this year, and immediately you say, okay, it's three games poor in the standings. That's not as good. But you got a feeling as the season turned over that you're in good position because you've got the answer to the hardest question in the league, at least for right now, in a quarterback. Tell me what you learned watching Josh Allen run around uh, every NFL stadium the last six, seven weeks and uh, be one of the most exciting players to watch over the last month and a half of the season. Yeah, Mike, you know, it's, it's a really interesting to sit back and evaluate the season as, as we all do after the end of the season. And you know, we all wish we were playing this time of year, and, and um, that's, that's the goal, um, the ultimate goal being trying to win the, win the world championship. Um, uh, having said that, you know, it's, you look back at our season and you say we won six games, and, and, and why weren't we better? Well, it's, it's a weird feeling because you feel like, man, we were better than, than winning six games, yet at the same time um, you feel like, gosh, we, we've got this young football team that is developing and just the signs of growth, the signs of, the, of development that we've seen just through the course of this season um, just I think is, is significant. And um, I think we're poised – um, if we add the right pieces and have a have a have a, have the right off season to continue to move this thing in the direction that it needs to go, and um, the moves that Brandon is going to make, and and um, and our personnel and scouting department have things that they've been working on all fall uh, should pay off for us this this off season. And you know we were we came in and as I as you mentioned the hiring cycle this year there's. There's a lot of reasons why guys get get hired. I mean, there's a lot of reasons where um, if you look at it like a patient, the patient is sick, right? So whether it's haven't drafted well, haven't managed the salary cap the right way, haven't developed players uh, on the coaching level, um, and sometimes all three or four of those uh, come into play. And so, um, you know, we're just trying to, Brandon and myself, uh, Terry and Kim, trying to get this thing turned in the direction where we can then sustain it for a number of years. Talking about Brandon Bean, who's the general manager. He had worked for a long time in the, the Panthers organization and is uh, is there with you now. Well, hey, one of the reasons for the results in terms of the 6-10, and 10, you played a really tough schedule. You start banging through the playoff teams. You played seven different playoff teams, uh, six different playoff teams in New England twice, and then you played the two teams that just missed – getting in the playoffs, Tennessee and Minnesota. So you played nine playoff-level teams, and then obviously you got your four division games, and most teams in this league play close division games. So you, so you had a tough schedule. Uh, I, I want to know what you thought of the growth of your rookie quarterback once you turned it over to Josh and what you saw those last five, six weeks as he brought in energy, I thought, from watching on TV to the entire organization, not just the offense. Right, and, and you and you and you talk about the schedule. I mean, that's we did face a challenging schedule, and, and you never know how it's going to. Ever, you know, teams change from one year to the next. We had uh, a crazy amount. I've been in the league close to 20 years now, and a crazy amount of away games um, early in the season. Right. Uh, I've never experienced that before, and then a late bye. But all those things are things that our young team can learn from, uh, quite honestly. And as as you mentioned, Josh, Josh. Um, got off to a start probably similar to a lot of rookie quarterbacks over the years where there were some things that he saw um, that were new for him. And and um, and then you, you fast forward to the last five, six games when he came back off the injury in particular and uh, really was a different, uh, a different quarterback, a more uh, mature approach off the field. And not that he was immature before that, but we were able to add – uh, Derek Anderson and Matt Barkley to the quarterback room and um, kind of gave him some consistency in there and an example of, of of what a veteran quarterback looks like, not only on the field but off the field. And, and to watch Josh then develop on the field, um, uh, really with the way he handled the rehab and then the way he handled each and every experience on the field, uh, each and every game down the stretch, 
um, you know, he's only going to continue to get better. And this is an important off season for us, and and this is an important off season for Josh. Um, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking with our team about when you come in and have some success, um, how how big the challenge becomes to to go into the off season and and work even harder to to improve yourself because as we all know once the league gets to know you and tapes out there film is out there people are going to study you in the off season and and try and take away um your strengths you're a defensive guy uh so much of what you learned was uh around jim johnson uh, the late great defensive coordinator there in philadelphia but you were also around andy reed so you were uh, for a great stretch of the start of your exposure to the nfl around two really special coordinators and jim johnson's deal was bringing pressure and you you were with ron rivera then obviously in carolina as a defensive coordinator but i just want to go back to that part of it for a minute and then you were with andy reed who was uh, innovative and as we've seen we start to look at all the guys off of andy's tree and that type of football being played by so many teams what were your thoughts as you watched this year and that 54-51 game, which seemed like the apex of the offenses have taken over, we'll never see good defenses in the league, and now, Sean, December and January, where all of a sudden you look up and it's really hard to score 24 points in a playoff game. What, what happened between November 1st and January 1st? I, I think it's, uh, in my opinion, Mike, it's a trend that, that happens – um, and I haven't researched this, but I, what happens is offenses get out. They've got new trends, um, new wrinkles, and it takes some time for defenses to get caught up. Um, but I think over the course of the year, defenses, defensive coaches start to figure things out and be in, and are able to adjust to those trends that we're seeing offensively. And and uh, and I remember, um, you know, the days and week or so after that game that you're referring to, that that was, hey, you know, basically the, the sky is falling. It's now an offensive. You've got to score at least 40-some points to win and um, so on and so forth. And then, and then I would add that I think the weather comes into play, right, yep. this time of year in, mm-hmm. in half of the United States, that you're, you're seeing some weather that you have to be able to, to run the ball in or at least it limits some of the, some of the passing games to some extent. You said a word when you were talking about your team, and for next year, Josh Allen and beyond, and that's develop. And a lot of that is coaching. And we see more elements, Sean, of college football, Saturday football, on Sundays and Monday nights and Thursday nights. But by the same token, I did a game on the radio last week, the Houston-Indianapolis game with Brian Greasy, and I thought he made a great point. He said, hey, third down is still an NFL down. Because the types of pressures guys like you design, bring, and create that havoc, that's something you just do not replicate or see at the college level. And that third down is still a down where you it's going to take you a while to master that and get a good sense of how to make plays against NFL-type defenses. How much of the development of players is happening at the NFL level now compared to 10 years ago, let's say, when you were in Philadelphia? Well, that's a great point. I mean, what what Brian mentioned is true. It's that third down is 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 purely an NFL down, um, and it's different than the college game. And so, there are college the college game has changed uh, immensely so over the last you know handful of years. And um, just let's just take the tight end position as mm-hmm. one that is hard. I mean, it used to be you were you were hard pressed to find a tight end that could. Uh, be the the pass catching style tight end that that everyone wanted but couldn't find, and now it's everyone's having a hard time finding the blocking tight end that's out there because right. they're mostly the athletes uh, in the way that the college game is spread out uh, and become a speed and space speed and space game. So um, there's been an adjustment. There there will continue to be an adjustment, and um, you know I think that to your point, developing being able to a uh, acquire the right players from a personnel standpoint, and then B, develop them and, and try and develop them in a shorter amount of time. Uh, going back to your first point in the way that the hiring cycle is working, um, X amount of teams turn over every year, that you, you have to be able to onboard the players the right way and develop them in a hurry. Hey, before I ask you about uh, your thoughts on the AFC playoff games that are coming up this weekend, you mentioned as you guys broke down what was going on in your season at the end of the year, I know you meet with the players. Can you give the listeners a sense of 
what the last couple of weeks since the end of the Bills season has been like for you and your coaching staff? What, what are, what's the time frame of what you've been trying to do and what's ahead here between now and the real deep dive into the evaluation process for the draft and free agency too before that? Yeah, right. Great, great question. So what we go through, uh, probably similar to a lot of NFL teams out there when their season ends, is we'll go through and have our exit interviews with our players um, and try and get some valuable feedback for ourselves in terms of uh, what worked, what didn't work uh, from the players at their level, and then also uh, do a deep dive as a staff and evaluate uh, where we were where we were good and where we weren't, uh, and where we need to improve, and and the solutions for some of those some of those answers. Um, and then you go back and and start to evaluate scheme. Uh, our offense and defense and special teams staffs are already evaluating scheme, and and then from there that'll that'll wrap up in the next month basically, and then we'll get into obviously the the um, uh, finding trends, what's out there in terms of what's the new wrinkle that. You, that we're both referring to with the Kansas City and, and Los Angeles, the Los Angeles game, and right. um, all the while trying to trying to evaluate the personnel side with uh, free agency coming up and and then the draft. So it's a it's a busy off season, uh, but one that's that's offers a great opportunity to improve our football team. That's crazy. All right, let me ask you, you played Indianapolis earlier in the season, and they got on a great roll as they went on with a guy who uh, Buffalo Bills fans know very well and Frank Reich, who was the backup for Jim Kelly for so many years. How do you see the Indianapolis-Kansas City game on Saturday? Well, it's two, it's two uh, good football teams. Uh, we played Kansas City a year ago, obviously with a different quarterback. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for Andy and and. I know he'll have his team ready to go, um, and and their young quarterback is off to a fantastic start. Uh, and then when you look at the Colts, and I think they're a very well balanced football team, and and probably a team that is going a little bit under the radar. Um, but they, you know, they have a team that can beat you uh, offensively, and and with their quarterback, they've got a quarterback that's as good as any out there, and. They also have a defense that can take the ball away and and make it real hard for for opposing offenses to score. So, um, you know, take not talking about their special teams in this case, but I think Indianapolis is a well balanced team and a dangerous football team that has momentum going into the off season and that's or going into the uh, postseason and that's that's key. Yeah, I saw, I saw that first hand in Houston. They walked right down the field in that first drive, and they changed the entire tone of the game. It was almost one of those games where Houston was kind of running uphill on a, on something that was a, a greased hill. They they just could not get their traction. They couldn't get comfortable offensively, and they, then they come down the cold score again. You just, I'm sure you've been involved in games like that where you just feel like you can never get yourself back to where you can pull even and you're always chasing that other team it just felt like Houston couldn't play their best game after Indianapolis jumped on them in the first quarter no I'd agree and we've I've been a part of some of those in particular in the playoffs and we had about three or four NFC championship championship games in Philadelphia where we felt like we were we're running uphill and uh and just couldn't make the comeback but um, no, that's 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 a, should be a great environment for a game. Uh, should be should be one heck of a football game. I'm going to look forward to watching. And, and quick on the on the other game in the AFC with uh, two teams you played. Obviously, you see the Patriots twice a year. You saw the Chargers early in the year. Uh, they provide a unique set of uh, set of challenges. But uh, now that you've done it for two consecutive years, and obviously you've done it on a high level in your other stops. What is it like preparing for Belichick coached in a Brady quarterback team as a head coach and as a defensive coordinator? Right. You know, the key there is, the, is starting with the quarterback. I mean, you look at all four of these, all four of the AFC teams, they all, they are all, they're all manned by very good quarterbacks, albeit, you know, Mahomes is on the younger side. He's had great success early on. And you go into, into Brady on the other extreme from an age and experience standpoint, you know he's going to be well prepared, as we know. Um, this is the time of year where they play their best football. Um, there's been tons of, plenty of questions over the years of uh, are they are they on the decline, so on and so forth. I mean, Coach Belichick does a great job of preparing his team for these types of moments, and they're tough to beat as it is, but they're in particular tough to beat at home. And you, you know you've got to go in there and not beat yourself. And uh, I think the way that uh, uh, L.A. is built with a good veteran quarterback. 
they also have a very talented offense and defense. And, you know, the one thing about their offense, in addition to Phillip Rivers, is they can also run the football, but they have weapons on offense uh, that makes them a tough matchup from a skill position standpoint. You, did, you guys did a good job against the Patriots. That Monday night game, you couldn't get any offense going, but defensively you, you were in it. And, and even in the game in Foxborough back there a few weeks ago, you, your, your team hung right in there. People have always talked, Sean, about pressure up the middle in the face of Tom Brady, which sounds really easy to say, but if everybody could do it, they would do it all the time. You, you give up stuff when you're trying to do that. Uh, what, what kind of a challenge is that to, to get Brady off the spot to try to get him a little uncomfortable, at least out of rhythm, uh, just suspect to give yourself a little bit better chance against him. Well, like you said, it sounds it sounds easy. It's 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 a little bit harder to do. Um, they do a great job, uh, Dante Scarnecchi, with their offensive line, uh, being their offensive line coach, and uh, they're well coached up front. They're well coached as a as a unit, and you know you try and take away Tom Brady, and all of a sudden the run game is schemed up against you and, mm. and starts mm. to beat you if you don't commit to the run game. So they do a great job, and they've been together for you know so many years there that they have a wide volume of plays to choose from, just from a continuity standpoint because they've been together. And and so um, when you have continuity from a coaching staff standpoint and a player standpoint. It makes it a whole lot easier to say, hey, remember when we did this, let's make that adjustment and, and, and go on from there. But um, they're, a tough, they're a tough out, um, and I just know knowing them, they're not going to beat themselves, and it's important that uh, L.A. goes in there and puts their best foot forward. I think they have as good a chance as anyone, quite honestly. Hmm. Um, it should be a good game to watch. Yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to watching your guys the next few years in the playoffs and not not talking to you th- this time of year. Congrats on uh, on the success of last year, hopefully finding a quarterback of the future, and really appreciate the time, and, and hopefully we we'll catch up with you either at the Combine or at the owners' meetings this spring, Sean. Appreciate your time. All right, thanks, Mike. Good to be on with you, and best of luck. Happy New Year. Our thanks to Sean. I, I thought there were some interesting things, and maybe for some of you it was informative to hear what it's like in the off season, right when you lose and you're done and you're six and ten or seven and nine and there's no postseason, how those guys are back at work and they are formulating their staff, their plan, everything for their off season. It's a 20-week season with four weeks of preseason, 16 weeks of regular season, and essentially 21 with your bye week before the playoffs. And the playoffs take a month. So essentially there's 26 weekends, half the year without NFL football. But you see how much work gets done just for those 16 game days, whether they be Sunday or Monday or Thursday. Fascinating background stuff. Enjoyed having Sean on the podcast. We hope to see you on NBC TV on Saturday before Chiefs Colts, if you're listening to this before that. If not, hope you enjoy the playoffs. We'll be back with you to look ahead to the conference championship games and a little bit more next week. Thanks to Alex Hardy for putting this together. Download us next week. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.